There's a famous old saying, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Our next inductee is a perfect example of that. He was born in Jefferson Township, New Jersey. Growing up, he came in with the finest athletes the area had ever seen. He became a championship wrestler and still holds many records at Jefferson Township High School. After graduation, he attended Florida Southern College and later transferred to Rutgers, where he graduated with honors in 1986. He grew up a boxing fan in a boxing family. His uncles were, in fact, some of the financial backers of one of our inductees last year, Roland Lestarza. His first taste of writing came when he traveled to then heavyweight champion Larry Holmes training camp in nearby Eastern Pennsylvania. He went there with his brothers to meet his hero, who was training at the time, the great Roberto Duran. The problem was, on that day, Duran was sick. He couldn't train. But he also knew that many of his fans would be there to greet him. So even feeling ill, Duran took pictures and signed autographs. It was so inspiring, he wrote about that experience and submitted it to a local newspaper. Well, that newspaper asked for more and more and more. Before long, he found himself one of the top boxing writers in the business. He wrote thousands of articles, interviewed hundreds of boxers. He was the feature writer for USA Boxing News after settling in Newport Ritchie, Florida. He was so respected, he became known to many as the boxing professor, asked to give boxing lectures. He also became a notable historian for his respect of military veterans he became a member of the American Legion and grew to become a respected historian of World War II. I never had the pleasure of meeting him, but just listening to one story from his family sure makes me wish that I had. While writing for USA Boxing News, he had a regular spot at Madison Square Garden in New York. It wasn't press row. It was back in the stands. He had a table spot where he would spread his stuff out, and while doing his job, he would talk with the fans and share stories with all those sitting around him. He was just so well-liked and approachable. He passed away in 2011, far before his time. His writing and the way he shared his knowledge with the fans will keep his name in people's minds for a long time to come. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame Class of 2012, the late writer, Gerard Rinaldi. Ladies and gentlemen, accepting on Gerard's behalf, please welcome his brothers, John and Alex Rinaldi. Thank you very much for the applaud you gave my brother Gerard. And it is correct. I think when a, writer, when a writer writes about something he loves, the reader could tell that because there's such magic and there's such passion in that story. And our brother Gerard Rinaldi loved boxing. Growing up where we were from, he could have covered the New York Yankees, the Jets, the Giants, and the Mets, but he chose to cover boxing because he didn't think there was any sport better than two men in the ring fighting their hearts out. And he first, after he met Duran, he later saw Aaron Pryor training for the biggest fight of his career against Alexis Arguello. Pryor was training right in the mountains of New Jersey. And Gerard became a regular visitor at his training camp. Gerard along with my brother Alex. I was at Florida Southern College at the time, right here in Lakeland, nearby Lakeland. Well, after the, after the training quarters, Gerard then came to Florida with me and we went on, we took a ride all the way down to Miami to see 
Pryor win that fabulous fight, one of the greatest fights of all time. And afterwards, Pryor met Gerard. Gerard introduced him to me, gave us T-shirts. He, he was the nicest man in the world, Aaron Pryor. But that shows how wonderful boxing and boxers are. And things like that, Gerard wrote right about that fight. He wrote about meeting Pryor, his training, and the subsequent battle and victory that Pryor achieved in that fight. And that is what makes boxing, that's what makes writers, that's what makes the whole sport, the backers, the, the promoters, everything so wonderful about boxing. And my brother Alex will say a few words. Thank you very much. First thing is we'd like to thank the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame, Butch and Kathy, Kathy Flansburg, the entire board of directors, this has been just a wonderful experience for, for me and my family and for the memory of my um, cherished brother, Gerard Rinaldi. Gerard Rinaldi is one of those special writers and one of those special people because boxing really is a fabric and there's all little different pieces that make the quilt that is professional boxing. Besides the fighters, you have the trainers, the managers, and the promoters. And then eventually you have the judges and the referees, and you have the riders. And without one, it doesn't work. But the combination of all these people, all these dedicated people, dedicated to the great sport of boxing, makes it popular as it has been for over 130 years. It's one of the only sports in this country that can claim such a long level and a long period of popularity. And my brother mentioned the introduction to Roberto Duran, who was our boyhood hero and was the hero of Gerard Rinaldi. And he got to know a lot of other fighters. For instance, after um, Vinnie Pazienza suffered that that near fatal car accident where he broke his neck, one of the first people to visit him in the hospital was none other than Gerard Rinaldi. He visited him there. He established a relationship with him and many other fighters of his generation. And as I said before, when he'd be at ringside for fights, he talked to the fans, which a lot of times people think they're better than others. People think they're loftier than others. Thankfully, you don't see that as much in the boxing community as you do with other sports, where he would talk to people, he would talk to fans. He'd actually even try to get autographs from fans if there was a, in a, a famous person there, a famous fighter. He was that type of person. He was one of the few people that Roberto Duran would permit back in his dress room after major fights. Was to, my brother Gerard and I, my other brother, we would go back into the dressing room after a Roberto Duran fight. One such um, colorful moment came in 1992 where we were in Buffalo, New York. And sitting in ringside were all the Buffalo Bills, including the quarterback, Jim Kelly. Well, after the fight, we were sitting in Roberto Duran's dressing room, and in walks um, Jim Kelly, the quarterback from the Buffalo Bills. Well, in his hands were he had like a shopping bag with him, and he presented Roberto Duran with a jersey, a Buffalo Bills jersey that said on the back, Duran. He presented him with a signed helmet and, and some other um, Buffalo Bills gear. I don't know if Roberto Duran actually knew who he was, but he was, <laughs> Roberto, he, he was a definite fan of Roberto Duran. Matter of fact, Roberto Duran, know what to do, that he was wearing a, a Mickey Mouse jacket. So he felt he had to give something, so he literally gave the jacket off of his back and handed it to Jim Kelly. And Gerard remarked, you know, it's interesting, Roberto Duran got all the Bill stuff and, and Jim Kelly got Mickey Mouse. <laughs> but that's the type of person Gerard was. People felt comfortable in his presence. It, whether it be fighters, fans, servicemen. He, was, he had encyclopedic knowledge of sports and of the military. He, could, he knew everything about World War II, spoke about it constantly, attended lectures. He was one of those special people who don't come away this way often. 
We will miss him. We have missed him a great deal. He loved the state of Florida. Growing up, we had a home in New Jersey and in Florida. And then later on, he lived full time in Florida. The two loves of his life, besides his family, was boxing and the state of Florida. And now he's together in one in this great state. We thank everybody very, very much. This is a great honor. Thank you.